it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of my die sets, number 1011, the Catherine label pop-up, and you can check out all of my designs at KarenBerniston.com. The Catherine label has a really fun mechanism to it. It basically just pops the label up. You can see the great motion that it has on it and also how generic it is. There's going to be lots of possibilities with this one, and I'm going to show this window card today. I've placed the nine dies that come in the set on my magnet sheet, and I wanted to just point out that there's only one piece, the L piece, that has anything to do with the pop-up, and the rest of the pieces are going to be great all-around dies for lots of projects. Card size is always completely up to you, but I've decided for my window card, I'm going to make a 5x5 square card. So that means I need a piece of cardstock 10 inches by 5 inches scored in the middle for folding. I'm going to start by cutting the window into the front of the card. So first I need to add any decorator items. So in this case I want to add a square of pattern paper to the front of the card. So if you think about the three labels that come in the set as being small, medium, and large, I'm going to use the medium one to cut my window. And I'll use some temporary tape to hold that in place while I die cut. Any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die will work with my dies, and I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot today. And now I'll cut the pop-up, and that is that L-shaped piece. So I'm just going to die cut that piece and start working the folds. Now all of the folds that are on this piece will be folded as a mountain fold, so that means away from you. But if you find it easier, as I often do, to work the fold first as a valley and then reverse it, that works as well. So I put my thumbnail right in the score line, work it first towards my thumb, and then immediately reverse it. And all of the folds in the piece will end up being mountain folds, as you see here. Once I've worked the folds, I can flatten it back out again and start adding my strong double-sided tape to three of the panels. Now the first panel is going to be the triangle panel out on the end, and I've just put my tape right up next to the fold. Next, I'll add tape to the tab on the other end of the L piece. And then the final panel that needs tape is the one that's right next to the tab. And that one's a little bit of a wider panel, so if you have skinny tape like I do, it's probably a good idea to give yourself two rows of tape so that you've pretty well covered the tab with adhesive. Okay, a little bit closer look now of where the tape is. It's in the triangle tab, the small tab, and then the panel next to it. Okay, so the little small tab up here is going to be used to attach to the other side of the platform to create a box. Probably the easiest way to do that would be to peel up the liner on just the tab and then fold the other half of the platform against the exposed adhesive. So you're basically doing it in a flat position and then you can expand it and it'll look like this little box that's out on the end of the platform. So now it's ready to attach inside the card and it's the triangle tab that gets attached just to the left side of the fold and along the fold. And then this part will come over in the flat position to end up somewhere like this. And what you want to check is just that the underside of that box is somewhere in the opening of the window. And I give it that little check because I can choose anywhere along the fold to place that triangle so I could have moved that up or down depending on where I needed it to be. Okay, but you can see here that it's just right along the fold of the card. Then I want to locate that diagonal fold and bring this half of the pop-up platform over to the left. And you want to see the tape. So if it's folded under like this, just you know shift it so that the tape is visible because that's what's going to be used to attach that now to the other side of the card. Easiest way to do that is to peel up the liner so that you've got a sticky box, hold down the platform with one hand, keeping it flat, while you close the card with the other hand and then press against that exposed adhesive and that will attach the box to the other side of the card so that it folds down nicely in the closed position and then pops up something like this. Okay, now's the time when you want to add the tape to the top of the box, and since I have a window card, I can just do that in the closed position. If not, you would just do that with the card open. I'm gonna layer together a large and a medium label to go on top of my pop-up, and I'd like to get a good placement where it lines up perfectly with the window in the closed position. The best way to do that is actually to peel up the liner on the tape so it's sticky, but then put the label face down in the opening and then press the pop-up against the back of the label. And that way you know you're going to get a really good placement in the closed position to where it'll line up with the window. 
by nesting the medium label die inside the large label die and cutting them at the same time, I'm able to create window frames for the card. So I'm doing that here. This is the piece that comes out that's the perfect window frame to go on the front of the card. I'm a fan of adding a transparency layer to a window card, so I'm using just a thin printer transparency and the largest label die. A dry adhesive is usually best on a transparency, so what I can do is add tape runner to the back of my window frame and then press that to the transparency. Then I'll be able to flip the transparency over and I can see where I can place my tape runner because I can only put it where I can see the frame underneath and that way it'll be hidden by the frame when I glue that inside my card. And the window frame for the front of the card doesn't need a transparency layer. It can just be a decorative frame. So there's really nothing difficult about this die set and it is so generic. So you'll be able to decorate that for any theme. For my card today, I've decided on a happy anniversary card. So I'm gonna use the pieces that come in the die set like the key, which I've cut out of glitter paper for both the outside of the card and the inside of the card. And then on the transparency, if I attach anything to the front side, what I like to do is attach the same item to the back side of the transparency, and that way it looks good on both sides. Whether the card is closed or open, you see that heart. So I wanted my label to say happy anniversary, and I knew I had the word happy in word set number two, but I needed a much smaller word anniversary. So my first thought was to do it on the computer, but as it turned out, I had a label maker that had a really small font in it, so I used that. I layered the oval over the smallest label, and that'll be where I'll sign the card, and then I'm gonna add all three of the different size hearts just as random decor on the background of the card. Now I chose a five by five card for a reason, and that's because it will fit in an A7 envelope, which is a very standard size, and it doesn't require extra postage. And this card was really quick and easy. And as you can imagine, you could swap out that greeting for anything. This has no theme to it whatsoever. Just a nice, good, generic card with some really solid decorator labels, ovals, hearts, key that can be used on all sorts of projects. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all of my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.